In this episode of Cassia's Tiles, we set foot on land, go for a wander through the local village, sample some street food, kick a football, learn what the locals do with all the seaweed, and sail to the next anchorage. In the previous few days, we sailed along the coast of Pemba, stopping at a few beautiful yet dicey spots. We ended up at the very north of the island, this time dropping our anchor well away from shore. We used the satellite imagery to make sure we're clear of any reefs or sandbars. Kayaks deployed, let's paddle to shore. Well, there's so many jellyfish. I hit one by accident. I was paddling and I hit him one. And I can feel a clunk. Oh no. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. It's so much better in here, isn't it? We paddled for a few hundred meters through the seaweed gardens, home to the jellyfish and sea urchins. Kayak is usually our preferred mode of transport in shallow bays with wide tidal beaches. Kayaks are a lot lighter than the dinghy, so we can drag them all the way up the sand, where the rising tide can't get to them. Apparently, Pemba Island is still quite Muslim and they don't appreciate girls running around in bikinis so we were advised to cover up before we start wandering around mm -hmm. I think and no photos the fishermen didn't like being their photos taken so let's see how the rest of the people on the island react to us trying to film and take photos I think we should just follow these into the village. I'd say this road would lead us there. Soon we were greeted by the first villagers. How are you? Mambo? Fun and you. Oh, good. Poor. After a quick game of soccer, we headed for the village, hoping to source some food. Egg. Uh, two egg, egg, two egg. Two egg, then. Two egg, uh, chips. Keg. It's a big, uh, popular dish here, street food here. It's called keg, I believe it's called that. <laughs> and it's just handmade chips. The guys actually peel the potatoes now, and you know, he chops up the chips, fries it, and when you order it, they get the oil up hot, put the chips in, and they whisk two eggs into it. They keep turning it up and down, upside down, back and forward, back and forward. It's like a pizza. It's called keki and you have it with a pimo chili sauce, which I absolutely love this stuff. Really good Tanzanian street food. But how's this, how's this for a five star restaurant? That's uh, cool though, isn't it? This is brought up my alley. Right up my alley. Do you want a juice on it? Um, do I get, uh, oh, wow, that looks good. Do I get some uh, chili? Chili toast, tomato toast. Yes, please. Thanks, bro. After lunch of chips and eggs, we continued through the village, this time accompanied by a local guy who volunteered to help us buy some fresh produce. Have another one, but make it thick. Okay. Yeah, 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 because we got some of these here. And one more. Two, no? So we managed to buy some tomatoes, which is already pretty good. Now just looking for some bananas. No one has bananas for sale, even though they're growing on trees right here. So our guide kindly offered us to share some of his bananas he may have at his house. And mission is kinda almost. Almost complete, it's pretty nice though, isn't it? It'll take a couple of days to ripen. So I'm looking forward to my banana shakes. My favorite banana shakes with um, dates and cashew nuts. Thank you, Eugenia, for making it for me. I appreciate it.
to the village and we asked our guide about all the seaweed we saw lying around drying in the sun. Yeah, for cooking, maybe you, you may put for water, medicine. Maybe, yeah, for medicine, the body, for foods. Versatile product, yeah, so from the sea here. Yeah. Yeah, wow. This is Santa. All people you do, all work. coming, oh. not working. Yeah. Uh, all mm. working for beach, you finish, uh -huh. isn't it? Yeah. Now you see sun? Uh -huh. I put here two days, three days already. You come someone, just your business. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for the information. Thank you. Wow. So we finally got all that stuff from this market. It's the end of the line for us. Back to Cassius. We'll be heading off, I'd say, tomorrow morning. So Zanzibar, bound we are. Sounds good. What we're going to do differently, instead of sailing all the way down along the coast, we're going to squeeze through this gap called Njao Gap inside the island. Now this is a quite narrow gap of about 0.2 of a mile which means on the rising tide and on the ebbing tide there's quite a lot of water pushing through creating a fair bit of a tidal current we don't want to be battling this current so we're okay. timing our arrival in a way that we're coming on a slack tide and rising tide this is another anchorage recommended by a sailor friend who has been here previously we haven't been here before so we're reliant on uh, people's advice we'll have a look if it's suitable we'll stay if it's not we'll have to find another option An autopilot, we can actually do attack on autopilots by pressing the 10 degree and the 1 degree at the same time. So it's 259, I'll do attack and I'll call that tacking, it turns at 100 degrees. This anchorage was by far the best one. The bay probably has an official name, but we refer to it as Craig's Creek, after our friend Craig, who recommended it to us. Through the middle of the island, through all the estuaries and the channels, 